what a beautiful frame to start with. Have you ever thought about how the massive iceberg or the ocean is made up of the same substance? And what if I tell you there is invisible water surrounding us in the form of gas? And even though we can't see the water which is in the air, we see it as steam. Every day we see all of this happening right before our eyes. But here's the real question. How can these three things, each looking and feeling so different, be made of the exact same thing? What kind of magic is this? How is it possible that all of these are simply water in different forms? What's really happening here? We'll see how, how ocean can freeze into ice, how ice melts back into ocean and how water turns into steam or invisible vapor. Let's break down exactly how these changes happen. Yes, we are going to explore how solids, liquids and gases can be converted from one state to another. So we know that solid, liquid and gases are different states of matter, right? And today we will look at how we can convert solid to a liquid, liquid to a gas and liquid to a gas and then further backwards that gas to liquid, liquid to solid. And there is a not so common type of conversion where the solid directly gets converted into gas skipping the liquid phase and the gas getting converted back into solid skipping the liquid phase. The scientists have a fancy name for this process, it's interconversion of states of matter. Let's start with the example that's super easy to understand and that we see in daily life. Water. Think of water in its solid form, that's ice. When it's liquid, it's simply water. And as a gas, it's water vapor. Now. I would like to show you water vapor, but water vapor is there around us. It's invisible, right? It's a invisible gas. Now, the only form in which you can see water in a gaseous state is steam. So when we talk about solid, liquid and gases, what makes each of them different? It's all about how particles are arranged, right? Let's zoom in on each of these state and see how the particles are arranged here. In solid, like ice, the particles are packed together tightly. They, that's why solids keep their shape and don't move around easily. Now in liquid, like water, the particles are still close together, but they have more freedom to move around. That's why liquid, like water, does not have a shape of its own. It takes the shape of the container. And in the gas, like in the water vapor or in the steam, the particles are spread out and moving all over the place, filling up any space they are in. Now here is the interesting part. How do we change from one state to another by just looking at these three diagrams about the, how the particles are arranged in these three states? What would you do if you were asked to convert from gas to liquid, liquid to solid and vice versa? It's simpler than you might think. Take a moment and think about it. What if I tell you, if I take the solid, and spread the particles apart, make it move like a liquid, it becomes a liquid. If I take the liquid particles, further spread them apart and make them move faster like in gas, it becomes a gas. And what is this some way by which we can change the arrangement of the particles in solid, liquid and gas? So that if solid, if we change the arrangement, it becomes a liquid. If we change the arrangement or how the particles move, it becomes gas. The technique or the way is by giving energy in the form of heat. Pretty cool, right? Just by changing the temperature, we can transform matter from one state to another so that its look, feel completely changes. Let's dig a little deeper and see how exactly that works. All right, let's look at our ice in detail, which is water in its solid state. The ice that I've taken here is at minus 16 degrees Celsius. Now, Notice how the particles are tightly packed together. Let's see what happens when we add some heat. As we apply heat, the particles already vibrating a bit gains more energy and start vibrating even more as the temperature rises. The more heat we add, the more intense these vibrations become. And when the temperature reaches zero degree, something interesting happens. The particles can't hold on to each other tightly anymore because they are moving too energetically. At this point, they start to break apart, loosening up and becoming freer to move around. 
This change means the ice has now turned into liquid water. So what we have seen here is the change from solid state to liquid state. The temperature at which this happens is 0 degree Celsius for water is called melting point and the process is known as melting. Alright, now let's look at water in its liquid form. Just plain water at 27 degrees Celsius which is a standard room temperature. Now as we know we can change water from one form to another by applying heat. Let's do the same here. So when we start heating the temperature rises and with it the energy of the water particle increases. As the particle gains energy, they start vibrating faster. Eventually, when the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the particles can no longer hold on to each other in the liquid state. What happens then? They break apart even more, becoming much freer to move around. At this point, our liquid water transforms into steam, which is the gaseous form of water. So what we have seen here is a change from liquid to Yes, the temperature at which this happens for water that is 100 degrees Celsius is called the boiling point and this whole process is known as boiling. So in this video we have seen how a solid like ice can change into liquid and then into a gas upon heating. In the next video we'll explore the reverse process how gas turns back into liquid and then liquid turns back into solid. We'll also look at the special transformation where a solid directly turns into gas and how gas can convert straight back to solid skipping the liquid phase entirely.